Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who love talking about bodies, why we get turned on, how we don't get turned on, and what are those fundamentals behind that? We are talking about some of the fundamentals today of testosterone. So that conversation has, I've been seeing this conversation up and down and all around social media lately, people talking about men are not men anymore because their testosterone has lowered. First, let's for the sake of this conversation, um, if I say men in here, what I'm talking about is AMAB men. So AMAB is assigned male at birth, which means that they are assigned male. They're not assigned man at birth. They're assigned male at birth, which has to do with their genitals and the way that they present with genitalia, which is sometimes obscure. But we're going to go with that because we don't have a lot of people assigning intersex at birth because they're not sometimes going in and really looking for everything so for the sake of this understand that we are talking very binary and we're talking very much about research that is done in a very binary way uh, so i'd like to clear that all up so if i reference men we are actually talking males and if i reference women we're talking females assigned female at birth because the research has wording that is actually not male, female, it is man, woman, that is not actually correct. Um, so when we're talking about sex, uh, uh, sexual um, assignations, like when you get assigned a sex at birth, you're assigned male, female, and in some countries they will assign intersex. So, but a lot of research is not done on intersex people when it comes to sex studies. So not a lot, maybe not any. I have not actually found any. So I'm assuming there might be somewhere in the world, but I haven't found it. Okay, so I wanted to put all that out there so everybody knows where I'm coming from. So the research today has to do with not just males, but females too, because guess what? Females have testosterone too. I know this is a surprise to some pretty um, Republican Americans, I'm sure, because they have a thing where they, I think they don't actually believe that females have testosterone and males actually have estrogen and progesterone. I know it's surprising, but it's there. We have them all. I know. I know. It's wild. So testosterone is a gonadotropin, which means that it's part of one of the things that's produced by gonads, but also by the pituitary gland. So we're looking at um, how and why these things uh, are being affected by specifically relationships. And I want to let you know, too, that testosterone is affected by many things, stress levels. That's uh, also affected by how much exercise you do. It's affected by how much Wi-Fi you are being um, subjected to on a regular basis, because Wi-Fi, we know, and there's research out there if you need to look for it. Look for it. If you would like me to send you links to different information, you can find it on PubMed about how um, EMFs affect uh, different things, like the, how it can affect uh, endocrine systems, for sure. Neal glands, pituitary glands. All right. And we have toxins, toxins that you might not even consider thinking about. They also affect hormones. So if you are exposed to a lot of toxicity, your body is going to have a natural inclination to try and survive. So it's going to start to put some things into place. It's going to start having reactions in order to survive. And those reactions are hormonal reactions in order to survive. So some of those toxins, I'm going to name some surprising toxins. Formaldehyde. Bet you didn't think you were exposed to formaldehyde. 
But if you have memory foam in your bed, you're exposed to formaldehyde. If you wear clothes that have like stretchy material, a lot of materials are preserved with formaldehyde. So we're actually exposed to formaldehyde in ways you would never even imagine. Now, for those of you who don't know what formaldehyde is used for, it's actually used in preserving dead bodies. And yes, it's toxic. And yes, having it on our bodies can actually cause things like um, nose cancers, lung cancers, especially if you're breathing it in, it can start to cause skin cancers if you have it right on your um, skin. But also all of these things can start to have an impact too. Um, if you're wearing the if you're wearing like stretchy materials that have formaldehyde in them and you're wearing them right close to your your genitals guess what and you're going to be absorbing that through sweat and through different things your body will start to absorb some of these uh toxins now we don't have um actual numbers on how much toxicity we absorb but absolutely things off gas you receive that whether you're breathing it or you're receiving it dermally you're going to start to receive it so what um so those are some things that are not included in the studies also other things like exposure to microplastics microplastics are a huge issue um they're like everywhere they're in your water um why because we have things like tide pods that break down and then those tiny plastics go in the water we have water bottles that you know are breaking down the plastics in the water, like your Nestle water bottle is breaking down those plastics and you're drinking it and you're drinking water that has microplastics in it and microplastics are not your friend. <laughs> so this is not a talk about microplastics. It's actually going to be a talk about how relationships um, affect levels of testosterone. Um, but I did want to include and let you know that there are many factors nutritionally and all sorts of things. If you're not eating a certain um, certain foods, like you need your fatty acids, you need certain things in order for your testosterone to be happy and at a happy, healthy level. So you can have excessive testosterone, you can have really low testosterone, and we're going to look at how relationship status can affect testosterone levels. So this is all from research from um, research that I found on PubMed. I'm a huge fan of PubMed. If you're not familiar with it, it's where a lot of uh, medical publications go with their research. You can find like research on anything pretty much in there that has to do with bodies and health. Um, it's a fabulous resource. So if you're, if you're ever, if you love doing research, PubMed is an excellent resource for uh, all things to do with medical research. So we are going to look at today some pretty fundamental things that that have been regarded as uh, you know pretty accurate studies over the last they've been doing some studies on this that I went back to 2006 on but they may have been doing studies on this prior to that the studies I'm going to be referencing today uh, will be going back into the 2000s, but not a lot of them are going back before that. The reason for that, even though those studies probably do exist, um, I'm not going back to, to earlier studies because earlier studies, actually, uh, we know that that um, testosterone has been measured in people for years, for decades. We also know that sperm count has been measured in uh, AMAB people for a very long time as well. So we know that testosterone effects also has an effect on production of sperm. And we know that sperm production, or maybe we don't, maybe you don't know this, sperm production has uh, greatly decreased over the last 50 years. Uh, so looking at what is that, what's causing that, is it the relationships that are affecting hormones? Is it the food? Is it the so many things, right? We have so many factors again today all other things that i mentioned before about we the these this research does not include this those things could have an impact right um but for the sake of this we're looking at how the researchers did their work so the first um study i'm looking at today i did i did look at how testosterone affects uh afab assigned female at birth and assigned male at birth individuals um 
cisgendered because this is where the studies are focused. So um, actually one of the studies is uh, cisgendered, but it's not uh, just heterosexual uh, based. So we'll be talking about that too. So the testosterone research, actually guys, what I'm just realizing as I'm talking is this is my ninth anniversary of having the pleasure zone. What? I just realized that like right now, that's so exciting. So yes, I think it was like maybe July 3rd or July 6th of 2014 that I started this show. Wow, cool. Okay, back to the information. Okay, so this report, um, you can find this in PubMed. If you need PubMed references, uh, this PubMed reference is PMC 6861983. Um, but if you go onto PubMed and you type in, you can search for different things. You can search for uh, testosterone levels uh, in men, testosterone levels in women in relationship. You can put in some keywords to get certain things that you're looking for. So in this particular study by Marza Marzati, Marziti um, and Kanali, I'm going to just pronounce them that way. I apologize if I'm completely screwing your names over. It happens to me all the time. Marziti and Kanali, I think that's more like it, reported higher cortisol levels among men and women who had fallen in love within the past six months compared to those who had not. Now, this is interesting. So this is one study, but we will look at some further ones. So the researchers attributed these group differences in hormone levels to the arousal and stress accompanying the formation of new social bond. So men who had recently fallen in love, men, so remember in this case, I was talking about assigned male at birth, uh, who had recently fallen in love also had lower testosterone level than cortisol, than, um, than the controls. So we will be talking about cortisol after. So cortisol is on my brain. Um, and the testosterone levels were relatively elevated among women in, in love. So, so when men fall in love, their testosterone goes a little bit lower. When women fall in love, their testosterone goes a little bit higher. So remember for this sake, because the research calls it men and women, we're talking about AMAB men, AFAB for women. Okay. So there was also further research through Marziti and Canali that compared single women uh, and women who reported being in love that they had higher levels of certain, um, certain other hormones like luteinizing hormones, FSH and then LH, um, and lower levels of free testosterone, FT. So if you're wondering what these are, um, I suppose I could do an entire talk on like the differences of these hormones. I don't know how sexy that's going to be for you guys, but I find it fascinating that your hormones can be impacted by how in love you are. And I think it makes a lot of sense. So if you are AMAB and you're searching out a partner, you might have more drive and you might have more competition. So your testosterone might rise in order to become attracted to an AFAB or another AMAB too. So it depends, or depending on um, your preference. But for this case, again, this has to do, this is very, the research is very biased that way. So we're just going to keep it to that. Uh, so when you're on the hunt, your hormones will rise if you're AMAB. Your testosterone, sorry, will rise if you're AMAB. And then if you are AFAB, your testosterone levels will, sorry, your testosterone levels rise when you're on the hunt. And for uh, AFAB, your testosterone is not necessarily super low, but it's going to be lower than it is when you're in love. So when you're in love, it's going to rise. So there, the research involved well over 100 people for that particular study, and they started to realize that also cortisol levels um, between single women and women in love also changed as well. They had a significant difference, um, but there was no difference in, oh, sorry, there, there was no significant difference in estradiol, prolactin, or cortisol levels in single women and those in love. So there are other things that will affect those hormones as well. Prolactin is that one that gets you lactating, therefore it has lactin in it. So causes of high testosterone in women. So 
there can be a lot of different things that can cause that to for women in general so it doesn't always have to be women again a fab women um doesn't always have to do with being uh, in love like oh my hormones are high i must be in love so let's not assume that just because your hormone levels you know you go you get your blood work done your testosterone looks high don't assume, oh, must be somebody I, must be because I'm in love. And Malitza said on the pleasure zone that like if you're in love, then your testosterone goes higher. No, let's not assume that. So if you are a fab, then if you're, you know, again, assigned female at birth, if you are female and your uh and your testosterone is high, there can be other things going on. So you could have polycystic ovary syndrome, you could have a few other issues going on. So I would get that checked and have them do more research on your body. Have them go in and check you, test you, figure it out. Them as in the medical system, because chances are that's who you're contacting, because that's who a lot of people contact, unless you want to contact me and we can talk. So that's another option. So if you happen to have things like polycystic ovary system or hirsutism or congenital adrenal hyperplasia, then you might have high testosterone levels anyway. And some of the signs are things like, you know, you get a lot of fatigue, you start to grow facial hair, but these are also things that show up oftentimes during uh, menopause too. So that shift can start to happen there too. So one of the ways if you have really low testosterone that you can increase your testosterone. So if you're in a relationship, you know, if you're if you're AMAB in a relationship and you want to know how do I increase my testosterone, just hang around. We've got a few ideas because you might not just want to leave your partner or start to cheat to like raise your testosterone. So we have a few ideas that are nutritional based that I'll share with you. But first, we're going to head to this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world, knowing your voice matters, and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist, Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Ah, so today we're talking all about testosterone that fun, fun gonadotropin hormone that we like talking about so much. Why? Because you hear it. It's like this catchphrase that you're hearing all over social media these days. I'm on T. I've got T. I don't have low, I've got low T. All men have low T. No, <laughs> there's like a lot of talk about 
um, men, uh, so a AMABs, we'll say, uh, assigned male at birth, that are uh, talking about how we're losing our real men. I've, I've been seeing this over and over for the last probably at least a year. Um, now, if testosterone makes you a man, then guess what? Female, assigned female at birth also have testosterone, so are we automatically men? If what makes you a man is your testicles, then what about all the guys who go off to war and get blown up in bits and pieces and they come back and they're missing their testicles? And even if they get plastic surgery done, they don't have functional testicles. I don't know if they do testicle transplants from people who have passed on, but maybe they do. Uh, so the the thing is that you you cannot just determine who's who how we're losing our men because of this we're losing our men because of their sperm count i don't know but if if you had testicular cancer and you lost your testicles and you don't have sperm production anymore um i don't think that would make you any less male so just saying <laughs> and if you had, you know, done the brave job of going to war and you end up with scar tissue or you lose a testicle or you lose both testicles and then your sperm count is really low, non-existent, <clears throat> where does that leave you as a man? So I'm just questioning those things for those of you out there who wonder how we're losing our men in the world. We have a lot more wars going on too. A lot more men that maybe don't want to go off to war. You know, uh, that, you know, being in, in those situations too will rise your testosterone really high. You need to have high testosterone to be in war zones. You need to be able to fight um, and have that desire to uh, hunt and fight. So it generally rises testosterone. I don't um, <clears throat> recommend going into the military to rise your testosterone. There are other ways to do it for sure. And being on the hunt, if you already are in a secure relationship, it's not necessarily the idea to go out and cheat to raise your uh, hormones, but that does happen quite a lot. There is like a natural inkling that, in, and sometimes I don't think there's necessarily an awareness around it, but there's a desire, there's something internal that goes, I, I feel not myself right now, I need to raise my hormones, I, I need to have a feeling that I feel validated as whatever gender you are. Um, you know, if you feel, if you feel like you need to feel more like a man, so you go out and you um, have an extramarital affair or something, and then your hormones rise and you're like, woo. And then now you're in a relationship where you're like, oh, okay, we're looking for security. And all of a sudden your testosterone drops and you're like, whoa. And then it might be rocky because, you know, you're trying to like navigate things for a while. Um, that can happen. Things get rocky. Um, you know, if you feel secure in the relationship, your testosterone will go low. Then if your partner is like fighting you and wants to leave, your testosterone might spike because you're now back on the hunt to try and either keep them as if you own them or, um, or the hunt to try and find a solution, right? So there's usually that kind of energy that goes on with the hunt. So how can we do that with food and nutrition instead, instead of like going off to war, instead of creating fights, instead of uh, creating havoc, which can happen in, um, you know, can happen in relationships where, you know, you're just like, I need my hormones to rise. So I'm going to go, it's not even that it's a conscious thing, um, but it gives you a little boost, right? So what will rise your testosterone uh, is having the correct amount of protein in your body because you can overdo it with protein as well. And then it'll just, it'll just become um, a problem actually for your body. So you need protein, zinc, magnesium. Um, you need B vitamins, particularly B6. <coughs> and you also need the uh, omega-3 fatty acids for testosterone. So 
if you're not taking those, or you're not having them in your body, by all means, add them through food. You can find lots of those things in your food sources. If you have no idea what those food sources are, this is not the show where I'm talking about that, but feel free to connect with me. Um, I do analysis for bodies so you can find out what you're actually missing, what's going on. Are these low in you? What can we do to raise them um, through nutrition or through supplementation? And also um, looking at the relationship in your life and like how do you feel about them are you in love are you not in love are you on the hunt because these things will all affect it as well you know have you had trauma that has you feeling super lethargic so again traumas can affect this too but again today uh, traumas in relationship can affect the testosterone levels we'll talk about that too so right now we're going to look at a little bit more research uh, that I found from PubMed uh, by Anders and Watson. So they actually, Anders particularly, has quite a lot of research on this topic, on um, testosterone levels in different situations and relationships. It was really, there's a, a quite, um, quite a lot of cool articles on PubMed about that. So one of the ones that I looked at had... Um, had noted that there's an association between testosterone and partnering in some women and men, and that this association has been interpreted as an effect of either relationship status, like differences in relationship statuses lead to differences in testosterone levels, um, and also relationship orientation. So the testosterone is kind of associated with the likelihood of entering a relationship like oh i'm on the rise like i'm getting excited i'm getting ready to rock and roll so to address uh whether physical partner presence was associated with decreased t so in this research this is what they were doing they were addressing whether the physical partner presence was associated with decreased t and um they actually brought in 72 women and 42 men. And one of the things that was fascinating that they found was that for men, it's not really relevant, men again, AMAB, whether they, whether the partner is present or not, their testosterone, just knowing that their partner is there can maintain their levels. But for females, their testosterone levels can change quite a lot when their partner is not actually physically present. So one of the conclusions is that partner presence isn't necessary to see an association between partnering and hormones in men, but um, as in, since if they're in the same city or in long distance partnered, uh, partnered men had similar testosterone levels, but it may be necessary for women since the same city, the, the partners in the same city, city um, had lower testosterone than long distance partnered women. So their testosterone goes higher when there's more distance. So it's really kind of wild that they even considered, let's just check it. Like I find this stuff fascinating. Like somebody's sitting around going, let's see how distance affects testosterone levels. Fascinating. Um, and like, how does it affect security? So I don't, I don't know that there was, um, oh, I did in this research, this is like an abstract of the research. So I didn't look deeper to find out whether they discussed anything to do with how the partners felt, uh, you know, do they feel secure in the relationship period? Um, how do they relate to their partner? You know, are they connecting with them regularly? Are they, even if they're long distance, what's going on? <clears throat> so it's, uh, yeah, I didn't dive in, so I don't know what they what else they added to that research. It would be curious to me to know how these uh, people felt about their relationship uh, and how the testosterone levels are related to the feeling. Like, I feel secure, even though I'm in the same city with my partner, I feel secure. Even though I'm in long distance, I feel secure. So to me, security and attachment style might have been a really awesome addition to the information uh, on some of these studies as well. So, and I'm not a researcher, so I don't even understand the lengths and uh, breaths that these guys go through to do all their research. So 
yes, I can sit here in my lovely office and go, it would be really nice if they could add this. Yeah, I'm sure it would be because they have all the time in the world. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I'm not critiquing. I'm just um, anybody out there who does research um, and you happen to know if there is research to do with security and attachment and how that affects testosterone levels. Um, there are in terms of like how people identify that themselves, not just with saying I'm married, I'm not married and blah, 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 but like maybe uh, how secure they feel in a relationship. So yeah, good times. We're going to head to our next commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melissa Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melissa Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Today we are tapping into testosterone, the big T. So for some people, I know that there is like, there's a lot of talk about hormones going on in social media. If you happen to be on the side of social media as I'm in, I suppose, maybe you're not in that side, but I'm seeing a lot of talk about hormones. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about people going on about we're losing our real men, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think there's more to that than that. Go back and listen to that second segment of my show where I did of this show where I talked about some other things that could be affecting um, that and what makes, you know, if if sperm makes you a real man, then what happens to all the guys who go off to war or guys who have had testicular cancer and lose their, um, for those of you who are AMAB, let's think about them too. So, uh, okay, so now we're moving on to some other great conversations about relationships and how they affect testosterone levels. So there's really great research out there on PubMed for all things, uh, all things to do with health and uh, medical, they're all, it's all medical research. So we're looking at some other research also, this is also by Anders and Watson, I believe, 
um, Anders did research with several people, so we're going to look at this research as well. So some of uh, what Anders writes in this abstract is that previous research has found that single heterosexual men have higher salivary testosterone concentrations than partnered het men. So single men have higher testosterone than partnered men. So this is consistent with the findings from before. If you're single, you're possibly on the hunt. Your testosterone could be higher. So there, they used both longitudinal and cross-sectional analysis to examine more of a diverse population that included, included het and non-het, so heterosexual and non-heterosexual women and men, which is great. I love that. It's very, it's getting much more inclusive in the research um, to find out how does this look cross culture, uh, cross, um, like cross-sectionally. So for het men, so heterosexual men, but not het women, and non-heterosexual women, but not non-heterosexual men, the testosterone was significantly lowered in partnered than unpartnered individuals. Interesting, right? So it's kind of like flipped a bit. So non-het women, but not non-het men. So sorry. <laughs> that's um so. Yeah, I know that's really worthy. So don't worry about trying to like follow this too much. We're just going to know that if you're heterosexual, a lot of this research I was talking about has applied to you. Now, if you're non heterosexual, there may be the reverse um, going on. So if you're non heterosexual, you might find that uh, if you identify, if you're cisgendered, if you're AFAB, you might find that being in a long-term relationship might lower your testosterone. And if you're non-heterosexual male, being in a long-term relationship might raise your testosterone. So let's look at what they're actually saying. The baseline testosterone was significantly lower in partnered than unpartnered individuals. That's where we landed last. The analysis indicated that changes in partnered statuses were not associated with changes in testosterone concentrations. So instead, the women, AFAB, and men, AMABs, with lower testosterone at the baseline were significantly more likely to be partnered at follow-up. So what these findings suggest is that partnered status is associated with stable trait level T values rather than the current state. So what they did was they also um, observed the effect as it's limited to individuals who are oriented toward female partners, male or female, who are oriented toward female partners. Um, and the results were an interesting, uh, the results were interesting. So they said it was in terms of an evolutionary trade-off between single and multiple partners and the possibility of female choice or disinterest. So kind of fascinating. I know that's really wordy, but I find research really fascinating. So simplify this. If you are uh, female and you have multiple partner choices or you have choice, period, uh, or lack of interest, either way, there may be um, some evolutionary things going on that will affect the testosterone levels. So we don't know for sure yet because these studies are, they are longitudinal, but I think even if they continue them, um, you know, same people even, if they're around in the next 20 years and see if that's true for them, would be fascinating to see for a new group, similar age, similar things that they're looking at uh, with when they go to test. So when they go to test these these people, um, they don't just take random people off the street. Random people do come off the street, but they have certain criteria they have to meet. So there's certain criteria in terms of like BMI, um, you know, certain lifestyle things that they have that are in common so that they have certain body types that are are similar so that when they're testing, they're not just they're not um, that they can do a comparison that's more accurate. Yeah. So 
I think one of the key things that I want to reiterate is that you know we as much as this these this research is very geared towards um, a, anybody who's assigned female at birth or assigned male at birth, we do not have research for anybody in the trans community right now that I'm aware of. We don't have research for intersex people necessarily that I have found either that I'm aware of. So, <clears throat> so there there is a whole chunk of society that's not being um, observed or discussed on this conversation. But this conversation feels fairly new in a way that the research is presenting in the last 20 years, and they are looking at different things. As I thought it was very cool, and kudos to Anders and Watson that they did look at uh, heterosexual and non-heterosexual people for that last bit of research I was discussing with you, because that hasn't really been happening um, until fairly recently. I'm not Well, I can't say that for sure. Testosterone levels probably weren't measured in such a strict way, but um, there was sex research done by Kinsey uh, on the whole gray scale of sexuality and all, all things to do with sex and gender and uh, sexual orientation and all those things. So that, yeah, his work was much more big and inclusive in a way, but a little bit strange. <laughs> so, so yeah, I can't say that they've never done that included everyone, but um, less and less research is geared towards people who are not heterosexual. Most research on relationships it has been geared towards uh, cisgender heterosexual people. So that's just the way it's been, and that doesn't mean that it's not going to change. It probably is changing as we speak. All right. That, that's my very liberal rant of the hour. Um, and we will, we, I do have some more research I want to share with you guys. I want to like bog you down with research, but I love research. So I got some other research from an article from Men's Health that does have references to different medical, different uh, medical research as well. Could be the same research I did, but they didn't name all the researchers. Uh, they just named a lot of the results that they found. And one of the things that they talked about is that uh, how low testosterone might impact your relationship and that testosterone plays a crucial role in many bodily functions. But one of the things that it can do is it could impact your relationship. So we will definitely get into more of that, right? So I think one of the things, you know, that people, the first thing they think of is low testosterone equals low erectile function, which is actually quite accurate, except in situations where uh, perhaps somebody's had a uh, prostate removed, perhaps they're much older in their 90s and, and it can 80s, 90s, and, and the tissues are starting to become less, there's less strength in the tissues, like erectile tissues, naturally. So the testosterone could impact that. Um, I did, I did have a client who had very high testosterone, who was a much older gentleman, that he had his erectile dysfunction. And it had, it actually um, was baffling to him. He's like, but I have high testosterone. I should, yeah. And I'm like, yes, but there is the fact that the 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 tissues need to be like a muscle right it needs to be used and, and it, it needs to be lengthened and strengthened and there are exercises that can be done for lengthening and strengthening it doesn't technically lengthen but um what can happen over age and time is that it can start to get the erectile tissue as it as it uh, is less strong it can look like it's retracting so it can look like a penis is shrinking even though there's probably still the same amount of tissue it's just not as um it's not as profound as maybe it was in your 20s so so erectile tissue yeah we can find that there is there is um there can be a correlation between erectile function and testosterone although i don't know what uh, grouping of people they're always looking at and i don't think it's true across the board uh, i can only say that because of the one particular client I had whose testosterone was high, uh, high normal, uh, and 
did have erectile dysfunction and did not actually have a prostate removed. So prostate removal can be, and it can impact the erection as well. So it's not always that you have low testosterone that you don't have an erection. It can be many different things. It can even be shame. It can be a lot of other things. So, oh, and hint, hint, women also have erectile tissue. Females have erectile tissue. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because guess what? The clitoris gets erect. I know what. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I, it, isn't it so confusing that we all actually have the same parts, but they're all just organized differently? It's so confusing, but so beautiful. I think it's beautiful, but <laughs> a lot of people are like, no, we're very this or we're very that. Now we all have exactly the same, or same tissues organized differently. Go deal with it. So um, being in a, let's, let's get back to some research when we come back from our next commercial break. So you're listening to the pleasure zone here on inspired choices network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. So we are just rounding off the show here today with some information from the Men's Health magazine that is based on research, and it's also uh, looked at several different researches uh, as well. So we have a bit of a... Um, uh, more inclusive, I guess, information, which uh, I was giving you guys some stuff that I was finding on PubMed. But this research also, uh, this article shows that the research is quite mixed. So this article that I'm looking at is called Relationship Love Testosterone. Oh, that's the uh, keyword search that I use. Five ways your relationship may affect your testosterone levels. And the article was published February 20th, 2023 in Men's Health Magazine. So um, what they talk about in here is that the research is mixed on the direct link between testosterone levels and relationships, but there's some evidence that certain aspects of having a partner, like sex and emotional connection, can influence your levels of testosterone. So other not-so-pleasant parts of being in a partnership, like stress and fighting, might also play a role too. But prolonged stress can lower your testosterone. Like if you're feeling unloved, unwanted, undesired, that can lower your testosterone. Random fights can actually give it a little spike. So it's uh, interesting, right? Again, not a good reason to have fights to just try and get your testosterone up. I think having some of the nutrition we talked about and supplementation uh, would be a much better way to do it. So the key, uh, the key thing to think about uh, for when it comes to men's health, we'll talk about men's health as an assigned male at birth. Um, the key thing to, to consider is that whether your testosterone is low or high that, and you're in a relationship and you're like, oh, my testosterone is low. Oh, this is a problem. It's, you know, I'm depressed. I'm having erectile problems. I'm having low libido. The one of the things to do is not to like run away and go get your testosterone automatically like injected into you because you can do a lot of things to improve this on your own that doesn't have you have to take 
testosterone because sometimes when you get on hormones, you're going to be on them for a long time. Sometimes, not always. So before getting on like a lifetime cycle of being on hormones, maybe consider a few other things first. Maybe get some relationship counseling. Maybe have a sex and intimacy coach like me come into your life and assist with some of the things that might not be working for you in your relationship so that you can have a better connection. So you can feel more like your partner is both interesting to you and intriguing you. And, um, you know, you're having the nutrition that your body needs in order to have your, your testosterone raise. Um, and, you know, we want to have you in a mood where you feel that there's enough, just, just the level of stress that gets you going, but not so much stress that has you uh, totally freeze and be un, non-functional where you're on like sympathetic, sorry, parasympathetic overdrive. We don't want to be on a parasympathetic overdrive where you're non-functional and frozen. Getting into a little bit of fight or flight mode, sympathetic response can help your body, but then even being calm is good too. So learning how to connect when your testosterone is low and learning how to be a lover in a new and different way can be excellent too. So you don't have to be the same lover you were before. And as you grow, and if your testosterone does lower, it might not be so much that you, you know, you need to like, you know, have some like hardcore um, sex where you're just like bumping and grinding real hard. Like it can change. So you can still have a lot of connection and you can have sensuality, you can have sexualness going on as well. And it can be very different if you invite more play into your relationship where it's not, you know, that the main target doesn't have to be uh, to have a climax. So we talked about that in the last episode when we talked about five different kinds of touch. And for some people, sexuality, uh, like sexual touch is their thing. And it's just like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of, kind of sex. But as you age, it may change and you may be moving into the sensual mood and it may be more fun to be able to have more play and that that will start to spark um, your desire as well. So for a lot of men too, if they feel really put down for a really long time or not acknowledged, men, again, amen. Um, they, they can often feel undesired and the lack of feeling desired can have testosterone kind of plummet actually. So the mood definitely has an impact. Um, there's a lot of research, uh, out there that you can look at on that as well. There's, uh, there's research by Ryan Smith. He's an MD, uh, in urology, he's a professor of urology at the university of Virginia. Um, and he says that there's some data to suggest that when you're in a healthy relationship, you may have lower stress levels, and that may play a role in your testosterone levels. So you're likely happier and have an overall sense of well-being when you're in a healthy relationship. But how that translates to serum levels or the measure of testosterone in your blood is more challenging to interpret. So I think what what we need to conclude with here is, that there's a two things, a lot of research out there. Some of the research is conflicting, but what we do find overall is that um, if you're calm, your testosterone for men, amen. Uh, if you're feeling calm, your testosterone will probably be lower. And if you're AFAB, you know, if you're feeling secure in a relationship, your testosterone may rise a bit. You'll feel more um, safe. So when your testosterone raises in your AFAB, you feel safer, you feel hornier because you're safer, like you don't feel like your partner's going to run away. And when you're AFAB, when you're assigned female at birth and you have all the pressures of you could get pregnant, you could have to carry a baby for the rest of, look after a child and all the things that come with pregnancy are major, major stressors to lower, um, to lower your desire, which can lower your testosterone. So having security in a relationship can make that a lot better. So knowing that um, if you're in a partnership where you're safe, your testosterone could definitely rise. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Jelanić. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 
6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.